So now that we've got our model complete here, I'm just going to export it as an OBJ file. Uh, this way I can import it into uh, visualization software. So we'll hit the blue button on our left hand there, come up to your save icon. Um, and you can either save it on the cloud or locally. Uh, for this, I'll save it locally. Um, and then you'll come up to the export button. That's this little up arrow here. Click it. Um, for OBJ, I'm going to uh, leave it on millimeters. I'm going to change my Y or my Z axis to up. Um, and I'll leave the mirror plane on YZ. Uh, I'll export single sided surfaces. Uh, this will help uh, later on when we uh, start baking shadows. And then I'll export it as the render mesh because we're going to go directly uh, into visualization. If I wanted to manipulate this file further in Alias or Moto or Maya or another modeling app, I would export the control mesh. But for this, we'll do rendered mesh and then I'll do welded vertices. And then we'll hit the little check mark here and we'll just keep that name. Hit OK. And that'll just take a second to do. And when it's done, we should have it exported. So once you've got that model exported, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to your uh, Gravity Sketch folder if you've saved it on your uh, locally. Uh, if not, you can download it from landing pad. Uh, but since I downloaded it locally, I'm gonna to go to my exported sketches folder, click on Gravity Sketch demo or whatever you uh, saved it as, exported it as, right click, and then I will extract. Um, I'll let that do that. The window popped up in my other monitor, so I didn't record it. Um, so once it's uh, extracted, um, you'll have it in its own folder. Where, let's see, you'll have it in its own folder here. So you'll have your OBJ file and the material tag for it. Um, so that's once you've got that, I'm just going to copy this. Uh, after that, you'll come over and launch. Uh, Vred. You can use, use Vred Design or Vred Pro. Um, I'm just going to be using the, the Pro version here. And we'll come over to File, Import. Actually, we can just hit it here. Import. Go find that file. And click the OBJ. Hit Open. And you'll be presented with a style dialog box. There's not much to change here. Um, but uh, if you wanted to merge any materials, center on the origin or put on the ground you can do that or if you set up a um, an automatic uh, painting you can do that as well i don't have any of that set up so i'm just going to leave it alone and then hit import and that'll take a second to do so you'll see here now that that's imported um, you'll have this kind of uh, standard scene uh, this is just the the studio here so you can get to that on the if you have the graph down here on the left here, you'll see uh, your environments and your uh, model here. And you'll see it brought in every single part. Um, so we've got the body there. Uh, they're just named, I guess, uh, whatever they are in, in Gravity Sketch. Uh, but you'll notice like stuff like the wheels, you know, each, each one of these is, is gonna be separate piece, um, even on the symmetry side as well. Um, so what I like to do is come over to materials to, to organize this. Um, I'm going to have a couple of steps. First, I'll organize all the data. Then I'll check all the uh, normals or all the, the, the face directions. Uh, and then I'll bake shadows, apply materials. And then I'll show you how to set up a basic scene to use uh, in VR. So if you come over to materials here, you'll get this little window. Uh, this pretty much is all the uh, materials that are in the scene. So that's why we, we applied them to each model or each part separately and made sure each part had its own material because that's how you're going to easily come through and sort this out. Um, actually, one thing I'm going to do is check the normals right now because if I start combining things, I might run into an issue. So we'll hit visualization, come down to vertex face normal rendering, and this will show you your uh, the normal direction or the face direction of your model. So anything purple is backwards. So what I'm going to do is hold Alt and left click or right click. Did it change? I wonder if it changed. Um, 
we'll do alt right click and that will flip the normals so it's either alt left click or alt right click it seems to be doing both for me um that one that was left click that was right click so it's either left click or right click there we go. We'll just make everything green. Uh, this is going to be useful when we uh, start baking shadows. If the normal fa is facing the wrong way, it'll just be a black surface, which is not what you want. Um, so that's that. I'm also going to fix the visualization on this tire. You can see it's a bit faceted. I've noticed. I noticed that happen in um, Gravity Sketch when I edited it. Uh, so I wonder if that's a bug in Gravity Sketch. Not a big deal. We can change the uh, the tessellation angle for the shading uh, within Gravity Sketch, or sorry, within Bread. So we'll come up to Scene, come to Geometry Editor. That'll open up this panel here, and we'll leave that at 35 and just hit Calculate Normals. And you can see it starts to smooth it out. We'll lower that to 15. Mm. Maybe a higher number. Yeah. We'll go higher. That's going to be pretty good. I'm going to add a texture to that. So uh, that's not a big deal. So that's fine. Let's just make sure it didn't change the vertex normal or the face normal. That looks good. Come back to realistic render. Uh, so now we can start merging the parts um, by material. So we'll just start with the top here. Let me see if I can minimize this. Um, usually I work with two monitors because these windows are a bit big. You can you can dock them to uh, the different the side and stuff. So maybe we'll just do that here. And it'll be nice if I can make that smaller. Anyway, uh, this material we'll do select nodes. So you can see it's selected all of these objects here. We'll just turn on the wireframe. So that's all the blackout. So what I'm going to do is right click, edit, geometry merge, or you can hit control shift M. I'll just start doing that from now on. So once I do that, you can see that added that part there. I'm just going to call it blackout. You can rename things as you do this. That's entirely up to you. We'll just come down to this material, select nodes. Okay, so that looks like it's the front tires. I'm going to leave these all individual at the moment. What I'll do is just grab each tire and I'll group them. So edit geometry uh, or edit and group selection. Uh, I'm going to do some texturing on that. So I'm going to put all these separate pieces for the moment. So that's that. We'll come over to this blue one here, select nodes. So that's going to be all the wheel, uh, all those wheel pieces. Uh, so that's so let's shift control M. We'll do this one. Select nodes. That's all the underbody. That's already its its own piece. Select node. Uh, okay, it looks like those tires and the glass have the same material. That's okay. I'll just grab these pieces individually. Shift Control M. Uh, I'm just going to name this stuff. It's really up to you how you want to do that. Uh, that's fine. Again, we'll do it one more time, and then I'll just time lapse through this. It'll just be a repetitive process. So that was already that piece. So I just spent the next couple minutes uh, merging and renaming a lot of these pieces of geometry and just double checking the material was assigned correctly. Um, I think in total it only took six or seven minutes, so it's not really that big a deal. Uh, depending how complex your tree is, it may take more time and less, uh, depending if you even want to do this. You know, you can leave everything individual and treat the data however you want. Uh, but I just like to have a nice organized file, especially if I'm trying to do different color combinations and um, kind of just great organization uh, habits to get into with uh, your files there. Great, so now I've got this organized. That only took me uh, 
I don't know, like seven minutes, I think. I time lapsed it, but uh, it didn't take that much time. There's not a lot of parts here. Now you've got it. Now we've got this all separated, so we can start either tuning these. We can make our own materials from these, or we can just use the uh, built-in asset library. Uh, I'll just show you where that is. I'm gonna just import a file that I have already made that's got materials um, that I, I'm gonna use for this. But to access the built-in materials, you just come down here to the bottom, right-click and hit Asset Manager. Um, and then that will give you this window here. Um, and then you can click under the uh, asset, red assets there. And you've got all sorts of built-in materials to choose from. So car paint will come to, down to metallic. Um, just take this, uh, right-click on this. You can either hit Control M or apply to select a node. And you can see that applied the material there. Uh, so you can just go around your car and start applying those materials. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is, is bake the shadows in this file. Um, you'll see it'll start to help darken up some of these arrows. Um, so uh, it'll help give it, it'll help ground the car, especially on the ground here. Obviously, uh, you'll get a, a nice baked uh, ambient occlusion shadow there. Usually do the wheels and the body and the body as well. Um, so I'll just go through and do that. So what I like to do is grab the object, you hit scene, baked light and shadows. That'll give you this dialog box here. And we'll just turn this up to nice quality. And then for the ground, um, I'm going to enable a subdivision and we'll bump it up to medium. What that's going to do is add more geometry uh, in areas where it needs uh, denser vertices. Uh, in order to bake the shadow because the, the shadowing or the ambient occlusion shadows are done um, based off of the vertex um, values on the mesh. So if it needs to add it, especially around the wheels here, you'll you'll see um, what it does once I hit calculate. This area here, you'll see it adds triangles. And then you can see it's now got that shadow down here. One thing you can do is come over to your materials once that's done and you'll see this shadow material that's already applied to the shadow plane in the, the default environment you can make your own um, and put it with the car i think i'm probably going to do that and now i have to move it i'm realizing um that we'll just put it back in there uh so once you have that material here if you come over to intensity you can actually play with that so you can see it's going to get darker or lighter um, you can even change the color if you want. You know, if you want to fake like a ground reflection color or something like that, um, that's entirely up to you. Uh, so that's what that does. We'll just bump. I usually don't go above like 1.2. Somewhere around there is pretty good if you want it to get it a bit darker. Uh, and then we can do that to the body as well. Uh, and then again, I'll do that to the entire car. Uh, I'll just time lapse through that because it's it's the same process over and over. Just grab all the parts. You can do it all at one time. Um, I find it actually a little bit quicker to do each part individually. Maybe I'll grab like a group of headlight and do it at the same time. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna when I do that for the body though, um, I'm gonna turn off subdivision because this mesh is dense enough where it'll shadow pretty well with the amount of geometry that it's already has. So we'll hit. Okay, there we go. That's done. Oh, and one thing I realized, uh, because I left these cut lines on, it's actually going to bake shadows underneath them. You can see it does that. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. If you have overlapping geometry, um, it's going to start shadowing in those areas, so you want to be conscious about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just redo this. Um, so we'll just come back up to scene, bake light. You can either clear active and then cut okay, and now that's done. That's good. So now we can come up for visualization and hit ambient occlusion rendering. And now it's showing you what we've got baked. So the floor and the body so far. So I'm just going to go around and grab the roof and that. And maybe I'll do this piece as well. Those pieces there. 
then I will, I'll just come back to this. We'll bake light on those. Great, so now that's done. Um, what do I want to do? Turn the cut lines back on. Tail light lens will leave clear the head light glass. Oh, where is, so this is actually a good uh, demo uh, because I forgot that uh, when you export the OBJ, any hidden layers will not export with it. And I um, must have had the headlight lens uh, as a hidden layer, of the transparency turned down uh, when I exported. Uh, so you can see it's actually not in the file. So I'm just going to spend a second and go back and export that piece. Uh, and so we'll get back in a second. So now that I've re-exported, I just exported the headlight lens. So you can just come into your uh, import again, and I'll just find the lens I exported. Just hit open and import, and you'll see it just popped it in there in the correct location. Um, I'll just rename this. Uh, this OBJ is a reference file in Red. I'm just going to pull it out of there because I don't really need that reference anymore. Uh, that's what that little chain link means. Uh, so once we've got that, we'll come over to materials. Uh, actually, I'm just going to, I'll apply glass to that later. Um, I am going to hide this right now just because I'll come in and I'll be shadows on all of these headlight bits right now. Uh, that'll just give it a little bit of sh uh, dark area and, and a little more contrast within that lens. So we'll do scene, fake light, and cut. Okay, that's done. And you can see things are a little bit darker in here, a little a little more shadow. Um, that looks a little funky. I'm gonna actually add some subdivision to that. I realize it doesn't have too many triangles. So, so when I did the bake lighting, she killed the uh, audio recording. So sorry about that. Anyway, that's that. That's headlight lens. Uh, what I'm going to do is clean up the material list uh, because I'm going to I'm going to open up another file that I'm having and just import this into it because I've got some materials and and environments and stuff already made. So I'll just save this as save. So then that's saved somewhere. Now I'm just going to open up this recent file I had. So this is the file that I had previously made. Um, I'm going to add the car to this because I've got um, all these different environments already set up uh, and different paint color switches uh, and vehicle switches. So um, so what, we're, what I'm going to do is come over to import and then I'll go find um, where I saved that other red file. Let's demo this one. Now we'll hit import or open. Um, what I'm going to do is... I'll use the environment from this scene. So I'll leave that alone. I don't have any sub references. That's fine. I'll just hit import and we'll see the car coming here. It's probably going to be rotated. Yep. Rotated the wrong way. That's okay. So now I've got this, the car that I just prepped, um, before in this scene and I'll just transform it to fit, uh, this, the orientation of this car and everything. So I'll just rotate it 90. Oh, no, that's the height, sorry. I'll just pull that down till it just cuts through the ground there. We'll give the uh, tires a little flat, and then I'll rotate it 90 degrees, and then we'll just move it back. You can, you can either use this dialog box, or you can hit Shift-W, and then hold Shift and grab the widget to move. Um, I think that's going to be okay. Not quite centered on that car. That's okay. I probably moved those other cars so they're not exactly in the right spot, but that's okay. Uh, this is here, and then I'm going to drag it. I already have this geometry switch made, so um, I'll just take this file, pull it in there. So now when I cycle through, oops, cycle through these vehicles, you'll see it'll pop up at the end there. So that's good. That was the environment. 
that's that one. Now I have to add the paint colors. So since I have um, these materials already in here from the other cars, I'm just going to apply them to this one to get it look a little better. Now you also notice that these jagged lines here, that's the anti-aliasing. So what I'm going to do is come up to visualization, real time anti-aliasing, and we'll turn that up to medium. Uh, when I jump into VR, I'm going to turn it to low because I could, that's a pretty big performance hit. Um, and with the the panels and the and headsets these days, that you don't really need to go above that anyway. So that's this. I'll just grab this body, and then I'll find my material switch. I think it's color, and well, this one apply to selected nodes. So now when I hit my hotkey, that should cycle through all the paint colors. And all the environments. That's pretty good. So we'll leave that like that. Uh, and then I'll do the same thing for the rest of the parts here. So I'll just I'll just time lapse this as well. Uh, it's just repetitive. I have to dig through my file um, to find certain materials here. So it'll just take a second. Um, and now there's actually uh, a built-in tire that I like, a tire texture that I like um, in the Asset Manager. Oops. So I'll right-click Asset Manager, come down to Miscellaneous. I'm going to select the object there. Miscellaneous, and we'll come down to Tire. Um, Let's actually do it on this side. I noticed the problem with it coming on the wrong way on the tire. Right click, apply to selected node. You'll see that it, it kind of mapped it oddly. That's okay. We'll come over to material. Click that and it'll select the tire. And then we'll right click. I'm sorry, it will modify. Then we'll come over to texture settings, get value from object. And you can see that that mapped it to that tire pretty well. Uh, you can also play with the blend position of the tread. You'll see that move there. Uh, you can also change the size. I think it's this one. Oh, that's the tread pattern. This is the profile. So, oh, scale marking. Sorry, that's what I'm looking for. So you can see that that number there we'll make it like one Let's see what that is nope what was it 1.27 make it like 1.3 yeah so that brings it a little bit more onto the side of the the tire there um that's pretty good uh so what we'll do is take that texture hit control c control v you'll see it made another one so i'll apply it to selected node and then get value and then we'll change that, what was it, 1.3. So now you can see we've got tires on both sides of that. Uh, and then we'll come over on this side, do that four times, copy and paste that again, grab our tire, apply, get value. So that's the car painted there. Uh, let's actually bake the shadow onto the tires. I completely forgot about that. So we'll come up to scene, bake light. I'm going to turn off subdivision. We'll just see what it looks like. Thing. There we go. Now they're a little bit darker. Um, what I'm going to do is just edit this wheel to be a little bit darker. Um, yeah, something like that. It's not too bad. So now we've got the model all painted here uh, and some of the textures applied and it's pretty much a, a rough overview of how I how I set my files up um, to be looked at in Fred. Now this is again this is all real time. 
Um, so it's easy to, to spin around. It's a little more artistic in its, um, in its look and feel, uh, but I think it's good to uh, do this as like a, maybe a sketch underlay or something like that. Um, if you wanted to go further, you can turn on ray tracing. Um, yeah, that'll just take a second and then get more realistic um, shadows and reflections and stuff like that. You know, tune the materials so they, they fit that better. Uh, but for this, I'm leaving it all in, in, in real time um, because we can come up and uh, view it in VR. Uh, but there's a couple things I want to quickly just touch on. Uh, so these switches that I've made here, uh, this car one, um, so I can flip through the different vehicles I have in a scene. So if you want to switch between different geometry sets, uh, you can do that um here uh you can also do the same thing with the paint switch i've got that set up as well so you can toggle between all those colors um and the environments as well uh you're going to want to put those in sets there's uh good videos on autodesk's site on how to set these up but in order to access them from the vr menu you're going to want to put them here so i have car switch environment and paint uh, that way, when you in VR, you will have them under here under variant sets. This is the menu that's in the headset, um, so you can click these from the menu uh, to toggle between all that. So we'll just get back to our car. We'll turn this off. Um, yep. Right, so once you've got your file set up with your different uh, color variants, geometry variants, environments, whatever else you want to do in your scene, uh, you can take this into VR. So again, um, you're going to do it in the real-time mode here. I'm just going to make sure I come back to visualization, real-time anti-aliasing, and just turn that down to low. Uh, get, depending on your uh, hardware setup in your computer, uh, that'll be performance hit or not. Um, I've found low works pretty well for everything I need it to. Uh, and then you'll turn on your VR. I'm just going to turn uh, launch Steam VR. If you have your Oculus, you can just launch the Oculus uh, software as well. Um, so we'll just minimize that. And then uh, it's pretty simple to get into VR. You just hit view, display, and then I'll, I'll just use open VR because I have Steam. If you have your Oculus, you can just hit Oculus there. So we'll do that and it will switch over to VR. Great. So now I'm in VR, so you can see I've got my controllers here as hands, um, and I've got the, the scene in front of me that we just made. Um, so the first thing you'll notice if you have your thumb on either touchpad or the joystick, you'll have this little teleport um, arrow here. So if you rotate your wrist like this, you can see with my hand, that'll dictate the direction you'll be facing if you see those arrows there. Once you push on the joystick, and you'll start teleporting around that model so depending if you want to look from the the rear or or maybe the side uh, so that's what you'll do there just to navigate if you don't have a space big enough um, to kind of walk around this vehicle um, the next thing you'll want to do is you can look at the menu so to access the um, the variant sets that we created i'll hit the uh, menu button that's on the oculus controllers the y button or I believe the B button. Uh, so now we can click on variants. We can change our environment. So we can just cycle through that. Get a good look at the car. Maybe we'll go to the beach, go to the airport, uh, Grand Theft Auto airfield. I uh, don't know where this is, just the desert. You know, so you can put whatever HDR environments you want in there. I believe this, the this is the uh, this is a newer one I found recently that's pretty nice. I believe it's London. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's London. Anyway, and then we can flip through all the paint colors just by tapping this menu. Uh, we'll get to that. I'm just gonna stand up here. I've been sitting, um, so we can jump around the the vehicle, um, and look at it from any which way. Let's get to that blue. That's pretty nice. Red. Uh, and then we can also switch between the different geometries. So this was the SR5 I made. Uh, this is another 
sports car. Again, these all share the same variant for the paint colors, so uh, that's how I'll switch between that. Go to this one. So this is up to you, depending on what you have in your file, you'll be able to switch all these. Uh, again, this is the car I just made, so we can really evaluate it in all different lighting. So this is that the studio light that's built in. You got another winding road, um, nighttime in Munich, I believe. Uh, parking garage, really, this is up to you. Uh, just, you know, evaluate different lighting scenarios and um, this is how you spend your time in VR, I guess. So this is a good way to look at it like full circle. This was all created in VR and now I can uh, evaluate the model itself uh, using virtual reality as well. Uh, so that's the end of this series. Um, I hope this was informative. You know, I hope you were able to gain a lot of insight into my design process and, and how I use Gravity Sketch uh, to create these quick kind of sketch models. In total, this took about, I'd say, four hours from, you know, doing the initial sketch lines all the way through the full um, polygon model and then even to get it into red here uh, to visualize it and look at it. So, yep. That's the end of this series. Uh, please leave your comments below if you want to know anything else. Maybe I'll put out some shorter videos uh, explaining a few things more in depth. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed, and yep, we'll see you soon.